Okay, chapter P, section two is rational exponents. <clears throat> Excuse me, do you guys know another term for rational? Anybody? A rational expression we're going to talk about later on. It's just a fraction. All right, rational exponents are fractional exponents. That's what that means. It's exponents that are fractions. <clears throat> we're going to talk later, um, probably in chapter P, about rational expressions. And that's when it's like x squared plus 3 over x squared minus 4x plus 7. You know, something like that. That's a rational expression. It's just a grown-up fraction. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to just go through a bunch of examples, just like we did yesterday. As I go through, if you guys have questions, stop me. I will answer. When I'm done, I will answer homework questions. If you guys had any yesterday, we can go over them and work through them. Okay, so here's an example of a rational exponent. Do you guys see how A is the base, correct? Yeah. And then M over N is our exponent, and it's a fraction. How did I go from exponential form here to over here? What happened with our M and our N? Look at it. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. The denominator the radical. Okay, I like what you're seeing there. The denominator, we're not gonna call this right here, the denominator here. This is the index, but I like what you saw there, Hannah. The denominator of the fraction becomes the index. <clears throat> and the numerator becomes the what? The exponent, good. All right, another thing I want you to see that happened. What is around the nth root of A? What is it in? Parentheses. Okay, I want you guys to understand that because we're going to get to problems and you're going to be, well, which do I do first? Do I do the root or do I do the exponent? We're always going to take the root first. I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, so that's the index. So let's, let's talk about some things here. One half becomes what? Uh, one. Well, one half, well, if I have the <clears throat> exponent of one half, x to the one half, that's saying the same thing as what? Um, the square root of whatever. But I don't see a little number there. I don't see an index. So if we don't see an index, what do we assume that number is there? One. Not a one. It's a two, okay? If you, and you guys have all seen that square root symbol 100,000 times. It's assumed that there's a two there. So how would you read this one? X to the one third, you would read this as the cube root of whatever, correct? Okay, so look at X to the two third. Well, what happened here? The denominator became the index, the numerator, <clears throat> became the exponent. So look how it's written. It's the cube root of x, what? The to the second power. You take the cube root first, then you square. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Um, let's talk about a few things. <clears throat> I'm getting ahead of myself, I know. But can you take, you don't have to write this part, but can you... <laughs> All right, can you take the square root of a negative number and get a real answer? No. 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 Can you take the square root, uh, or can you take the fourth root of a positive number? I mean, I'm sorry, a negative number and get a real answer? No. No. Can you take the cube root of a negative number and get a real answer? No. What's the cube root of eight? What times what times what gives me eight? Two. Two, okay. What's the cube root of negative 8? Negative 2. That's true, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 equals negative 8. So can you take the cube root of a negative number? Yes. yes, but can you take the square root of a negative number and get a real answer? No. What about the fourth root? No. What about the sixth root? No. What are you guys telling me? Odd okay, you can. You can take an odd root of a negative number. You can't of an even root. Okay, here we go. All right, let's do some examples. <clears throat> this says four to the one half power. So I'm gonna rewrite this. What goes where? 
Denominator becomes the index, that little number, and then the one becomes the exponent, right? So this just becomes the square root of four. Do I have to put a two there? No, it's understood there. What is the square root of four? Two, okay? How am I gonna rewrite number two? Okay, it's the cube root of 27. And what do I have to do to it? Do I have to hug it? All right, let's, let's put a hug around it. And it's squared. So let's simplify. We're going to work inside out. What is the cube root of 27? Three. What does that mean, cube root? What number times itself three times, right? So this becomes three squared. Whoops, which is good. <clears throat> hmm. What's number three? How's that a little different? It's negative. What does that mean? We have negative exponents. We give up. We give up. Oh, Hannah, we don't ever give up, honey. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what does this mean? If I have a negative exponent, anybody remember? I can do something to make it positive. Tell me. Tell me, Paul Davies. Take the reciprocal, so 1 over. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, rewrite this as 1 over 81 to the 1 fourth. Did you say, oh. Oh, here we go. All right, if we have a negative exponent in a numerator, where can we relocate it so it becomes positive? Tell me. The there you go. Good, good, good. Remember, we're reviewing, guys. If you don't remember this, that's okay. Take notes of it. Let's go. So how would I rewrite this? This is 1 over, what does that mean? 81 to the 1 fourth. Think about what happens. Tell me, Frank. The fourth root of 81. It's the fourth root of 81. Good. So the fourth root of 81, what number times itself four times gives me 81? Nothing. Yes, three. So this becomes one third. All right. <clears throat> All right, 16 to the three fourths. Help me rewrite that, somebody. The fourth root of 16, good. So hang on, let's write it. And then we're gonna put that in parentheses. And whatever that value is, we're going to cube it. So what number times itself four times? Actually, I don't like the way I wrote that. Hang on. That four needs to be smaller. What number times itself four times gives me 16? Two. Two. And then I'm gonna cube it, and that becomes eight. Okay, good job. Anybody have any questions? Right now, Angel, right? Angel, right now this says this, right? In order to make negative exponents positive, you move them either from the numerator to the denominator or the denominator to the numerator. So once we take this 81 to the negative 1 fourth and we move it down here, your exponent becomes positive. All right, let's look here. Ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> it's okay. You guys take your time. Work in steps. You don't have to do everything at one time. First of all, what does this say? 1,000 to the negative 2 thirds power. First of all, let's make it positive. What's that going to become? One over, good. 1,000 to the 2 thirds power. All right, let's go. Simplify a little more. 1 over, how do I rewrite this? this. Tell me, Hannah. The, um, the, the square root of 1,000 is the 3 in the Opposite, opposite, opposite. We're going to go cube root of 1,000. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I misheard you. My bad. <clears throat> Okay, no, no worries, my bad. Okay, so now we're going to answer the question. We're going to say, what number times itself three times gives me 1,000? That's 10. And then when I square it, I come out with 1 over 100. Good, 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 good. I'm not going anywhere. You're okay. All right, number six. <clears throat> number six says negative 100 to the 1 half power. Is that a negative exponent? Do I need to turn this into a fraction or anything? No. What this question... Okay, sorry. My bad. I was confusing 6 and 8. I wasn't looking at the, at the right thing. What do we do first if we're evaluating, guys? Exponents, right? Yes? Yeah. Okay, so I have a negative out in front, correct? And then I have the square root of 100, correct? So this becomes negative 10, yeah? All right, let's look at 8 for a second. Yes? Why should the because the negative sign is not in parentheses with the number. So when, the way it's written, it's telling you to evaluate the one half first, then multiply it by the negative one. So if I look at number eight, let's skip to eight for a second. Do you see the difference, guys, in six and eight? All right, in number eight, they're telling you to take the square root of what? 
negative 100. Good. So this becomes negative 100 the radical. This COVID is where it's nothing. And it's not, it is nothing. There's no real answer. We'll get to what the real answer is here later on. And it, I don't even know if we get to complex numbers yet or not, but it's going to be 10 I. It's imaginary. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Right. So here we go. Look at the next one. I have negative 64 in parentheses. So if I'm going to rewrite this, do you guys agree with me? We're going to rewrite to the cube root of negative 64, and then I'm going to square it. Yes? What number, can, first of all, can I take a cube root of a negative number? Yes. Yes, because it's odd. So what number can I multiply three times to get negative 64? Tell me. Four. Negative 4, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have negative 4. And then I'm going to square it. What does that become? 16. 16. All right, good. Questions? <clears throat> this is a 4. Negative 4 squared. Negative 16. All right. <clears throat> Continuing our examples. How do I rewrite this? 27 to the 4 thirds power. Cube root of 27 and we're going to raise it to the fourth power correct well what number times itself three times excuse me 27 so i have three to the fourth power which is 81. perfect 81 good all right same thing number 10 <clears throat> it's the s read it to me square root good square root of 64 raised to the third power. Perfect. So what is the square root of 64? Eight. eight and then eight cubed. You guys are like, I don't know, I have a calculator. That's okay. you got a brain. What's eight squared? What's eight times eight? 64 times eight. You don't, if mental math isn't your thing, no big deal. Write it down. Hmm? Not 90. We're going to take 64 and multiply it by eight, right? So eight times four is 32. Are you guys with me? Okay, so we're going to rate, and then it's 512. Perfect. If you don't do mental math well, no big deal. Write it down on paper. <clears throat> I wrote it down, and I got 90, so. Okay, we'll look at it. Okay, that's okay. We'll look at it. Everybody with me? Yeah. All right, how's this one a tad bit different? What do I see first that's an issue? The negative exponent. So how can I rewrite this so my exponent is positive? One over. Perfect. So I have 1 over, I still have negative 32, to now it's the 4 fifth power, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so we have to evaluate that. So I have 1 over, can I take the fifth root of a negative number? Yeah. I absolutely can, because it is an odd root, good. So as we simplify, what number times itself 5 times gives me negative 32? What kind of 2? Negative. negative 2, okay. And then what is negative 2, <clears throat> excuse me, to the fourth power? 16. Positive 16. Perfect. It's 1 over 16. Yes? Okay, so let's look at this one for a second. You don't have to write down the first step that I do here. But let's think about this for a second. What did we talk about yesterday when we have an exponent outside of a fraction? Where does that exponent go? to everything, right? It goes here and it goes here. So would you guys agree with me that this is 121 to the negative 3 over 2 power and then I have 100 to the negative 3 over 2 power, correct? But they're both negative. You can flip them. If I take 121 in the numerator to the negative 3 over 2 and I put it in the denominator, that becomes positive, right? Same thing, if I take the 100 to the negative 3 over 2 to the numerator, you just flip it. If you saw that from the beginning, you could do that. That would be fine. But this is <clears throat> the same thing, excuse me, as saying 100 to the 3 over 2 over 121 to the 3 over 2. And then now we can simplify. If I rewrote the numerator, what does that look like? Square root of 100 raised to the third power. The square root of 121 raised to the third power. Agreed? What's the square root of 100? So I have 10 to the third power. 
What's the square root, ladies and gents, of 121? 11. 11. Raise that to the third power. Now what are we thinking? <clears throat> We're stuck. Hold on. What is 10 cubed? 1,000. All right. Does anyone know offhand what 11 cubed is? No. What is 11 squared? 121. So then let's take our pencil. 121 times 11. <clears throat> what is it? 1,331. 1,331. Good. Good, good, good. Questions? How are we feeling? Good. Okay. Awesome. 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 All right. Let's move on. Ooh, now we're starting to talk about stuff we did yesterday and combining it with today's stuff. What do you notice about number 13? It's multiplying. What are we multiplying? I have six to the four thirds times six to the two thirds. What do you notice about the base of both of those numbers? The it's the same. If I have the same base, I can rewrite the base. And what do I do to the exponents? I add them. So this is the same as four over three plus two over three, correct? Just because we have fractional exponents doesn't mean anything. We don't have to freak out. We could just say, oh, okay, it's the same rule. So this becomes six. What's four thirds plus two thirds? Six thirds. What's another way I could write six thirds? Two. What's six squared? Good job, guys. All right? No reason to freak out. <clears throat> None at all. Now, there's different ways you guys can approach these problems. I understand that. Okay, so some of you are going to look at this and say, well, I did this. Some of you look at it and say, I did that. But let's try to be as simplified as possible. Does anybody know the rule? Hold on one sec. Does anybody know the rule if you have the same base and you're dividing? What do you do to the exponents? You subtract. You subtract, right? When same base and we were multiplying, you had them together. So it should make sense that the same base and you're dividing, you subtract. So do I have the same base here? Yes, I have the base of 125, so I have 7 thirds minus 5 thirds. That gives me 125 to the what? To the 2 thirds power. Now, can we evaluate that? Absolutely. How would I rewrite that? Is, the, is it the square root of the number cubed, or is it the cube root of the number squared? It's the cube root of 125 and then I'm gonna square it. So what number times itself three times gives me 125, five, good, and five squared is 25. Great, guys, good job. Everybody okay? All right, so we look at 15, and initially, some of you are gonna think, oh, okay, I have <clears throat> negative eight ninths, I can put it in the denominator. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. If you wanted to, you could rewrite this as r to the 17 over 9 over r to the 8 over 9, correct? I could do that, right? What am I going to end up doing with my exponents here? Subtracting them. Well, if I look at this initially, I'm multiplying same base, so what would I do to the exponents? I'd add them. If I add a negative number, that's the same as what? Subtracting. Subtracting. So some of you are going to say, well, I saw it this way. Some of you are going to write it that way. It doesn't matter. Both of those are mathematically correct. I'm going to just keep it as this is r to the negative 8 ninths plus 17 over 9. You could have done it the other way. You could have said r divided by and then took 17 over 9 minus 8 over 9. It's the exact same thing. These are the same thing. When I do this subtraction or addition, however you want to look at it, what is negative 8 and a positive 17? So 9 over 9. Well, what does that equal? This is just r to the first power. So is it, would that just be r? Yeah, you just leave it as r. Perfect. Wow. Wow. A lot going on here. Ugh. First of all, what do you notice about the bases? Okay. They're all the same. Good. Oh, Both. I, I, but no, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Both. That's fine. That's fine. So there's a few different ways you guys could, quote unquote, we'll say attack this. I'm going to go <clears throat> this route. I'm going to combine. My pen stroke is too thick. 
I'm going to combine the denominators first. So I'm going to leave z to the 3 fourths hanging out up here. And I'm going to do what to the denominator? They have the same base, so I do what to the exponents? Okay, so I have 5 fourths plus a negative 2. If you want to write minus 2, that's fine. You guys with me? All right, so we're going to break this down nice and slow so you see everything. Z to the 3 fourths, and I have Z to the 5 fourths plus what? How could I rewrite negative 2 so it has the same denominator? Negative 8 fourths, perfect. Okay, agreed? So now I have z to the 3 fourths over z to the what? Negative, Negative 3 fourths, wonderful. Do those 3 fourths just cancel because 3 fourths minus 3 fourths? Yeah. No. no. Think about it, guys. If you are dividing, same basis and you're dividing, you're actually going to end up adding, right? Because you're subtracting. So think about it. I have z to the, if, I, if I'm going to subtract these exponents, it's 3 fourths minus a negative 3 fourths. Two negatives make a what? An addition, a positive. So this is going to become z to the what? Six fourths. Can I simplify that? Yes. To what? z to the 3 over 2. If the direction said to use rational exponents, what does it mean to have a rational exponent? What does it look like? What's the form? First slide I told you. Rational is another grown-up word for what? Fraction. If they did not want rational exponents, how could you rewrite this? The square root. I hear you. Tell me. The square root of z cubed to the third power. Perfect. Just pay attention to what the directions say. Yes, ma'am. How did you know to do the subtraction? Because I have <clears throat> same bases right here. Do you see where we have the same bases and we're dividing z to the three-fourths divided by z to the negative three-fourths? So our rule is if you are dividing bases that are the same, you subtract the exponents. So in this case, when we say three-fourths so minus a negative, it becomes a positive. When you're multiplying same bases, you add. Yep, good. All right, two more examples. You guys are doing great. All right, this, start, this looks intimidating, but it's really not. Let's, let's look at it. What is happening here? What is happening here? Distribution. Actually, I don't like the way this is written. Your parentheses, they should be like this. That's what was meant. Okay, I have all of these exponents. I have letters and I have exponents, but it's all raised to a power, correct? Mm -hmm. Where does that 15 go to? Everything. It's going to come here. Where else is it going to go? To the y, and where else? To the x on the bottom. So let's rewrite this. I have, what's 1 fifth times 15? X to the third. What's 2 thirds times 15? Y to the 10th. You're right. And then what's 2 times 15? Okay. I'm going to do this problem two ways. I changed it. I'll do it another way in a second. All right, now what happens? What do you guys notice? I see two x's, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. What do we do when we have same bases and we are dividing, subtract? So this would be, what's 3 minus 30? Negative 27, y to the 10th, yeah? Okay, what's another way we could write that? Say the directions say, ooh, I don't want any negative exponents. What's another way we could write that? y to the 10th over x what to the 27 okay good now I, the reason i changed that problem is because i wanted you to see something what about if the exact same setup it was like this like it was originally
Where does the 15 go in this case? Only to the numerator, correct? Do you guys see the difference there? I cannot impress upon you enough how important the placement of parentheses is. So in this case, we would still distribute. And we have x to the what? Third, correct? Y to the? And then I have what? X squared. All right, so now what does this look like? I have the same bases. I have x and x. Same bases we're dividing. What do we do to the exponents? We subtract. So this becomes x times y to the 10th. Do you guys understand that? Do you understand why? Look at the difference here. Where is the, in the pink up here, where is the larger exponent for the x's? In the numerator or the denominator? The denominator. In the yellow down here, where is the larger number or larger exponent for the x? In the numerator. Do you guys see why if you write it without negative exponents, our top one in pink, the 27, x to the 27th is in the denominator because that's where more of the x's are. Does that make sense? Okay, let's look at the last one. See, this is not so scary, right? Somebody really, <laughs> what do I do first? We're going to distribute. We're going to simplify and distribute. So I have P to the what? P to the what? P to the three-fourths. You're fine. And then what do I have here? P to the ten-fourths. Now, some of you right away go, well, you can simplify that. Yes, you can. Yes. Because this is 5 over 4 times 2 over 1. So you have 10 over 4. Now, some of you are like, wait a second. You can simplify 10 fourths to what? 5 halves? Which is true, but why would I not do that in this case? Because I'm going to subtract, right? I have the same base, but we're dividing. So I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them both in fourths. So it just makes my problem a little easier. If I went ahead and said 5 halves, fine. But then I would have to say 3 fourths minus 5 halves, and I'd have to go back to fourths anyways. So this can be written, same thing if we want to, as p to the 3 fourths minus 10 fourths. Notice, guys, I know that 10 fourths is bigger, but why did I write 3 fourths first? Because it's on, because because it's on top, all right? You have to make sure you keep the order the same, especially because we're subtracting. So this becomes p to the what? Negative 7 fourths, all right? Say the directions specifically say write without using negative exponents. What would this be? 1 over p to the 7 fourths. What about if it said do not use rational exponents? It probably won't ever say that, but what would that look like? 1 over the 4th root of p raised to the 7th power. All three of these things mean the same thing. Generally, you'll be asked to keep it like this or like this. But just understand the mechanics of moving things around. Questions? No questions. Okay.